Uh, my name is Matine and my friends Leniv and Jinkun. Um, so our project was uh, to try uh, to see if we can come up with some robust damage detection of civil structure under varying operational and environmental conditions. So the, the problem is that um, usually a, a bunch of uh, machine learning techniques, signal processing, pattern recognition techniques have been using in structural health monitoring domain, but most of them are um, uh, tested in laboratory conditions, which like everything is um, controlled and you don't have much varying environmental conditions. However, in real field uh, situations, those uh, variations and environmental factors can mask the change that are caused by damage. So they really can, uh, your techniques may not be applicable in real field data, as our results also motivate that. that. So we used um, um, data from a hot water supply pipeline uh, in Green Hall um, mechanical room. So, um, so we used um, piezo piezoelectric um, uh, data. So the um, signal that we are seeing there is the excitation signal. That, uh, like, give um, the method is kind of um, a pitch catch method. You excite the, um, uh, from one part of the pipe, and you get the data. Like you receive signals from the other part of it. And so after doing some processing on the signal, this is the process signal that that we are getting. Like. So just to motivate what, uh, what is the problem here, what you are seeing is the uh, overlaying of uh, uh, one damage signal and one uh, intact signal on top of each other. And this is the residual. And this is another damage and intact signal. And this is the residual. As you can see, OK, from time domain, you, it's impossible to come up with some patterns. And also, this is the overlay of frequency domain. And again, like the residuals are not uh, very um, um, indicator of uh, what's going on. So that's why, uh, but we know that the damage effects are there. So that, that's what motivated us to use uh, some decomposition uh, techniques. Um, uh, independent component analysis was one, of the uh, uh, was one of the methods that we tried to, because we, we wanted to see if we can actually extract that, because the damage effect are actually independent from the effects of environmental factors. So we wanted to see if there's a way to extract that independent component that damage may have. Uh, so the several approaches uh, using ICA we have uh, um, followed, 20 of them. <laughs> we are, uh, so the average zero that I call it is just a kind of a baseline. So we just said, OK, let's assume that we don't do anything. We just did SVM on our original signal and on the frequency spectrum. Of, of course, that's what I expected. This didn't turn out very well. So average one was just applying the ICA on all the uh, train data. And this is the four um, IC stat uh, independent components that you get. So we first checked the, uh, for the, to see if there is a, any damage sensitive ICs. So from the class, you know that the A, uh, uh, a mixing matrix columns are the, actually the coefficients. So this, you see the four coefficients of those components. And we would expect to see some patterns after a while, like uh, till, uh, uh, like till here, for example, is our intact data, and after that, it is our damage data. But we couldn't actually see, so there is no uh, damage sensitive components among those. So then we also use that uh, for the dimensionality reduction, like as PCA. Oh my God! So. <laughs> So again, we, have, we uh, implemented in a separated uh, damage and intact data, and um, also we tried to see if we can uh, identify some uh, factors that are sensitive to environmental condition and detect them and eliminate them from factors and do the um, uh, projection on those uh, components separately. And another approach was to try to cross, uh, uh, reconstruct the uh, signals based on the components and see the residuals that can be leading and also do that in the frequency domain. So generally, none of them work. <laughs> <laughs> so we realized that, okay, environmental factors are so like effective that they kind of mask really the components. So we cannot uh, identify the damage sensitive component. So but we. Um, uh, tested the compressive sensing approach. Go and read Wikipedia about this. And then uh, we could come up with better results, but it's still we have less uh, accurate results in uh, days in the data set that we have high environmental variations. And
and we also tested elastic net regression, but we didn't go into depth, we didn't have time to go in, but this is definitely a path that we try to go further. That's all.